Arctic fan lineup can be, let's call it overwhelming. P12, P12 PVM, P12 Silent, P12 PVM PST, and so on. There are quite a lot of them. For today, however, we will dissect the main part of Arctic lineup. And then we will have a closer look at what subversions exist, we will see why they exist and what their intended purpose is. And then, then we will see what Arctic fans to use, in which situation, or if there is just, you know, one fan to rule them all. But who are the contestants for today? Well, for sake of my own sanity of creating two 10 minutes videos instead of a 20 minute chunk, because you know that hurts, we will be only focusing on the main lineup today. Naturally, I'm talking about the originals, the, the price conscious options, the P's and the F's, the P12 and the F12. And just because it fits kind of better into the naming scheme, the Arctic P12 ARGB. The fan that was added because... Mm -hmm. The fan that was added because, you know the other group didn't want it. So what is the actual difference between an Arctic P and an, an Arctic F fan? Well, the name actually already tells half the story. The Arctic P fan is standing for static pressure, while an Arctic F fan is standing for air flow. And to jump a bit back to a short explanation I did a while ago, static pressure of a fan is defined as the amount of pressure, usually in millimeters of H2O, that a fan can press against a resistance. Airflow is defined as the volume of air that said fan can move on a unit of time, usually CFM, cubic feet of air, per minute. In case there is any confusion on what millimeters of H2O unit means, it's actually just how many millimeters can a fan lift a predetermined amount of water, it's, it's, it's pressure. The maximum static pressure that a fan could achieve would be whilst blowing inside a completely sealed off box, while the maximum airflow would be a fan that blows air at absolutely zero restrictions. However, neither of those two states are actually achievable in reality. There will always be some sort of restriction, like the frame, the pieces that keep the, the fan in place or your parents disappointment. And there will never be maximum static pressure as the fan will just stop spinning because it can't move air into this, in, into this sealed box. And the design of the fan blades directly reflect that. While a P fan has a wing design with six heavily bent and therefore extremely thick and long blades, an Arctic F fan will come with nine lightly bent and very short wings. Two designs that are very distinctive and immediately distinguishable from far away. Unfortunately for this video, this is not the complete lineup, uh, not even by long shot. However, it's the same thing for uh, both types of fans, though I just need to do it once. As a base model, there is an P12 and a F12. These are the ones powered by a 3-pin header. From there, we've got your PVM models, the P12 PVM and the F12 PVM. Those come with the same max rotation speed, however, they are rocking a 4-pin PVM connection, so you can manually adjust them, or adjust their speed, with your software or your motherboard or your BIOS, or by taking uh, some cheap Chinese electronics and, and putting them in between. From there, there's another iteration, the PVM PST. Those are the ones we should be looking for, the 99% fan, the, the golden gooses, the thing that you should buy instead of everything else. Those are not only controllable over a 4-pin PVM header, but they also come with a very handy PST or power sharing technology part attached to the actual header. And ignoring fancy ass buzzwords that nobody needs, it's daisy chaining. PST means there is a spiller attached to the header. To jump a bit ahead, those are the fans that we are going to be focusing on today. Those two are PVM PST. Everything else just doesn't make sense to be honest. In a general application, if you want to buy a P or a, or a F fan, PVM PSC is the only thing to look for. But we are not done. In addition to the spaghetti product line we already have, there are a bunch of special subversions that exist. The P and F silent, for example. Those are like the original 3-pin header versions, but they are running at 60%, so they are basically bad and, and slow. Then we've got the P and F TC fans or temperature control. 
Those are three pin powered fans, but instead of being controlled by some sort of an intelligent system that can accurately use a component's temperature as a reference, those have a tampon string sticking out which is trying to guess the system's temperature and then control the fans. And then we've got the last one, the P and F12 PVM PSTCO. Just like the regular PVM PSD, those are the good ones. However, this is not built for the average PC. You see, every other Arctic fan will come with a fluid dynamic bearing. And not to go too deep into anything here, it's basically a shaft sitting in some sort of lubricant. The PVM PSTCO versions have a dual ball bearing, so two metal rings with a bunch of metal balls in between. The difference between the, the two is that the fluid dynamic bearing is quieter, quite a bit actually, due to it having no metal to metal friction, but the ball bearing is made entirely out of metal, and if you know anything about metal, it's sturdy. So uh, yeah, it's the solid stuff will generally have less problems. For example, leaking out is not a possible issue. So you could, you know, go 10, 20 years and, and, and those things are, are made to keep it together. Of course, on a theoretical level. But still, that's why there is a CO model, a, a model for constant operation, which will, in, in theory, live longer than a usual F or P12 fan at the cost of 1 to 2 dB. Then again, it is not like an industrial version, but it is built for, you know, things that run 24-7. Servers, Minecraft machines, that kind of stuff. And that's pretty much the whole damn lineup. We have a base fan with PVM, the Golden Goose with PVM and Daisy Chain, a base fan crippled down to 60%, a base fan with a tampon string, and a Golden Goose fan meant to live longer than you yourself. From there, Arctic also offers different color options. There is white, white with transparent wings, black, and black with transparent wings. And that's pretty much the whole Arctic P and F lineup. Pretty easy actually, but even easier if you only consider the existence of the Golden Goose. In the end, considering the price of an Arctic fan as a as a whole, just go for the PVM PSD version no matter what. That plug is going to help you, or at least it is not going to annoy you. So yeah, there are essentially just two fans to look at, the P12 PVM PSD and the F12 PVM PSD. That, that's really easy. But before we go to each fan individually, there is another fan that is included in this main lineup, the P12 PVM PSD ARGB 0DB. Damn, that's one hell of a long name. Essentially, this is the ARGB version of Arctic's P12 fan. It exists in, in black or white and somebody at Arctic got the right memo and they ditched all of the subversions and they only concentrated on a golden goose version with a 4 pin PVM plug and a daisy chain system attached right next to it. On a quick side note, there is also an ARGB and RGB difference. One with 4 pin non addressable RGB and the other one with 3 pin addressable RGB the usual RGB issue. However, that's not all. Although the fan wings share an extreme resemblance to the original P12 PVM PSD, on the RGB or ARGB versions we've got an extra ring around the blades which is connecting all of them. Even if there is no official statement from Arctic side why they did this, as we've seen on other fans with the same implementation, having such a ring can help to eliminate turbulences created around the fan frame at the end of the wing. But again, that's a, uh, a big if and I've got no documentation about that. But the last difference we've got is the so-called 0 dB mode, or in other words, the fan can stop once you set it below 10% PVM. Wow. So this is the final lineup. We have the P12 PVM PSD, the F12 PVM PSD, and the P12 PVM PSD ARGB 0 dB Arctic's man fan lineup. Looking at each fan individually, we can already see on their spec sheet which fan is made for what. The P12 is spinning at 1800 RPM, while it's pushing 56.3 CFM at 2.2 mm of H2O. Seems to be a good radiator or heatsink fan. For the F12 on the other hand, it is spinning at only 3050 RPM, but while doing so, it is able to keep up with the P12's airflow at 53 CFM at 1.0 mm of H2O. And as the name would not have suggested it enough, the P12 ARGB is back being a radiator heatsink fan with its 2000 RPM at 48.8 CFM and 1.85 mm of H2O. 
Knowing each fan specs, we can see a clear pattern here. The F12 is a case fan and the two P12s are meant for radiators or heat sinks. Now, do you remember the stuff we saw in the Notcher Explained video with the, the PQ curve? Well, Optic also provides us with some of those. However, somebody there seems to be a bit sadistic and the graphs are on different scales. Thank you for that one. But after a bit of tinkering around, we can make the sucker fit. And this is what we are basically left with. Do you see the problem? If we would assume that this is the line that a radiator uses, and this one is the one that a heatsink uses, and this one is for cases, and then if we remember that being closest to the upper right side means being the best, we can maybe see what, what the issue is here. The P12 is absolutely always the best fan. And as much as I would like to tell you a different story, we did the same test we always do. We strapped two of them in front of a P500A and one in the back as a case fan and then we strapped them on top of an NXT Kraken N22 as a radiator fan. And in each and every one of those cases, the P12 was either the coolest fan or it was at least sharing the first spot with one of the others. That would be a, a really brutal lineup for Arctic. However, there is still Noise 2 performance and Noise 2 performance is the scale to go. Let's start with the one we all know how it's going to end. As Radiators fans, we were absolutely not surprised. Keeping the Thunder on the X both cooler and quieter, the P12 is the absolute winner, with the P12 ARGB being close behind and the F12 is participating. So the P12 is the best Radiator fan so far. As a Heatsink fan, the game got a bit more complicated. Although the F12 immediately lost, quelle surprise, the P12 and P12 ARGB are kinda battling, with the ARGB version being better on the, the very high and low RPMs, and the P12 being kinda the winner in the central spot. So kind of a draw, but on a personal note, best max and best quietest is two points, and best central area is like one, so the P12 ARGB is kinda the, the best heatsink fan. Take notes, Arctic. We, we want this to happen. And now coming to the to the one competition where the F fan can finally start to do something, or not. Where the P12 and P12 ARGB are battling again for the first place with a cluster that I will just call a draw, the F12 is, um, yeah. So unfortunately, the F series, even while taking noise into consideration, the name of the thing is uh, pretty freaking accurate. For the other two, it seems like the P12 is the radiator and heatsink fan. Although we need to take this with a grain of salt because we are talking about a degree difference here. It's not like we are talking bad versus good, it's like very good versus not that much very good. And as a case fan, there is very little to no difference between the two. So yeah, this should be the full explanation of Arctic's main fan lineup, including which fan to use for what, and which fan to use as a doorknob. In case it wasn't clear enough, in the Noctua Explained video, I briefly went over mixing fans. For example, a real pusher in the front and a good airflow fan in the back. The issue with this is that um, for each and, and every mixing scenario, the end result could just be as good as the scenario using only the, the best fan in the mix. For example, take two P12s in the front and one F12 in the back, and the end result is just that the result will be limited by the P12's result. And depending on how bad the fan in the back is, in this case the F12, the result will just start to shift away from the best scenario. And considering how bad the F12 series is, it's not a very good idea. This only makes sense if the airflow fan is a fraction of the price of the other ones. In that case, you would say I, I can, uh, for example, uh, give up on one degree C, but I will sp spend 20 euros less, but this is not the case. So no, do not even think about F12 fans, those are not very good fans, and you, you should either go for P12s or P12s ARGB, and you will have the best case scenario with the two of them being so close to each other it doesn't really change. But okay, this was it for Arctic's main lineup. Naturally, as I was already in the production of this, I also did a benchmark on all of their Bionic series and all the other fans, so you can bet your ass that there will be a second video coming, which will also be recorded in like about 60 seconds. Anyway, if you want to keep watching, have a look at the Rocky Explained video. It's, it's still pretty interesting, or I hope so at least. 
And if not, you can always run a Discord server and maybe we can start a, a server internal Arctic vs. Noxiva Street dive battle. Who knows, it's, it's early. But okay, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.